All right. We have now entered our first temple, Skyview Temple. The music to this place is awesome. <laughs> So, Fee just tells us right now that we cannot douse within temples or dungeons. Uh, which is not a problem. Not a problem at all. We can still look around, but we can't douse. And it really doesn't matter in the end. Hold on one second. I gotta check something. Alright, I'm back. Sorry, I had to make sure I had something done, like some chores or something like that. But anyway... Uh, here we have some spider webs. You can run through them, but you'll get caught. So you have to kind of get close enough to it to cut the webs. It's really annoying. I really don't like this. Uh, there are a few spiders, spider webs that you're going to have to cut in this dungeon. Uh, but, anywho. So, let's just keep on going. Uh, more trees to cut down. They should make, instead of a Link crossbow train, they should be Link loggerman training. <laughs> Link logging, logger training. Oh, great. So, oh, I'm kind of spiderweb. Alright. Oh, I'm kind of spiderweb again. Alright, so there's an amber relic there. We can grab it with our sword. And now we have three. Very nice. Alright, so there's a door locked all the way up there, we can't really do anything about it, so if we head all the way down to the bottom of this little area, uh, yeah, there's a locked door. Because on these trees we can head up this vine, but there is a Deku Baba all the way at the top, so if we tried climbing the vine, the Deku Baba of course would hit us. So we need to use our slingshot to daze it, then quickly make your way up the vine. Up the vine. And then let's kill the Deku Baba. And over here's a switch, so let's activate it. And this opens the door. Uh, for the first dungeon, there are some pretty simple puzzles. But it's actually... It's not too bad of a dungeon. Um, actually, none of the dungeons in this game are horrible. They're all actually terrific, so... Um... There's an amber relic up there. In order to get it, you need to run into the wall. Uh, compared to Twilight Princess, I'm going to make a lot of comparisons to Twilight Princess. Uh, this dungeon is so much better than the Forest Temple. The Forest Temple was just torture in that game. This, None of these dungeons are actually torturous. They're all quite exciting. They're all different. They're great. Actually, probably some of my favorite, if not my favorite, dungeons in all of Zelda. So, I mean, that probably should say it all, but yet again, that's only my opinion. Alright, these guys, they're kind of like the... They're kind of like those little spiky things from Wind Waker. The ones that the, uh... Mothulas throw out. Uh, they latch onto your body, they don't slow you down, but they do explode, so in order to get them off, you can roll, you can do a spin attack, you can just, I don't know, find some way to get them off, but just don't let them stay on you for too long. Anywho, uh, not much to do in this area, we can kill this green Baco blend. And we can take a look around. Let's see what, okay, there's a locked door there, we can't do anything without a key. And there's a switch up there, so let's go activate that. Alright, so that door is unlocked. There's a locked door over there. We can't do anything about it, so the only available place to go is through here. Alright, there's another spider web here. Let's cut it. Alright, we made through. Alright, just want to make sure I don't get caught on these stupid things. They're really hard to like, cut, especially near the bottom, and the bottom parts of the web always catch you off guard. Anyway, over here we have... Oh. 
Well, over here we have some new enemies too. Uh, these guys, they like, they're like Skulltalas or Waltalas. I'm gonna, yeah, these are Waltalas. Um, very common enemy in the Zelda series. And over here is actually the Skulltala. No, I, I didn't want you to- Oh my gosh. Sometimes, Fee, you just don't do the things I want you to do. Alright, there we go. It's a Skulltala. Uh, the Skulltalas in this game are actually very, very, very annoying for the, for the time being. Uh, seeing as you don't really have anything to cut them down from their um, webs while they're hanging from the ceiling. You do have to find a way to kill them, and unfortunately the only way to really kill them is to knock them around and get and strike their underside using the thrust. I was lucky for that one because I didn't get hit. But they do knock you off, they do cause damage if they do hit you, so... Uh, and, and since the thrust is not probably the most reliable um, reading of the sword mechanic, um, it works, it's just you have to be very, very precise that you don't do it at an angle, you just make sure that it's a very prominent gesture. So that tablet just basically said that there's a switch above and there's a switch below, somewhere hidden within these dungeons. So if we look down, you can see there's a little crawl space. So let's head through there. And there's one of the switches. So this should be the switch that is below. Now this causes the water level to rise. Unfortunately, I forgot that there are a few rupees in that main area of the dungeon where you can collect if you go into the bottom. And unfortunately, you can't really collect them once you have raised the water. If you look down here, there's a patch of soil that looks uh, conspicuous, but we can't do anything with that right now. Just keep that in mind. Just keep it in mind for later on. Anyway. Um, not much to do in this room. We've already activated the switch, so let's head back. Ah, web. So let's head back. <laughs> Alright, so... As you can see there, there's a vine. We can't really do anything with that. So we need to find some way to progress through. Now this may be a little bit hard to find at first, but he over here there's a little hidden alcove, and inside is another switch. You can act, you could activate this before you raise the water level. I just forgot to do that first. It really doesn't matter which order you do it in, but this unlocks a door to the left or right, depending on how you look at it. So let's climb the vines and go over to the left. Now in this room there's another green Baco blend. We'll take care of this guy. Um, let's see if we can he can attack us so we can block him. There we go. All right, so if you get the timing down, he will be dazed, and you can get in a good blow and onto him. Anyway, there's a skull chill there. He can't do anything and kill him because he's on his web. But we can knock down these vines over here with our slingshot, and let's swing across. Alright, and over here is a Quadrababa. Quadrababa. And this one's gonna be down. There we go. Alright, so now that we're on the back side of these Skulltalas, we can thrust through to their undersides. Uh, these ones are not too hard to defeat. See what I mean? Like, the webs get caught on the bottom. You can't really cut those, it's really annoying. Anyway, let's cut this web. Come on, oh, come on. I really hate these webs so much. Come on, get out. Oh, gosh. See, it's like right on the ground. I can't reach that far. It's my sword is not long enough. It's really annoying. All right. Anyway. 
Uh, hold on a second, I missed something. There should be a switch in here somewhere. Over here? Yes, alright. So this is the second switch. The one that's from above. We've already hit the one from below, and we now hit the one from above, and this raises the water once more. Don't worry, this is not a water dungeon. Um, there is a water temple in this game, but it's not at all, like, Ocarina of Time. It's actually a very, very good dungeon. Thank you, Nintendo. <laughs> anyway, now we're up here, and this kind of puts us in the main room. And we can open this chest for the dungeon map. Unlike the other Zelda games, this uh, in Skyward Sword, the dungeon map also contains a compass, so it reveals the locations of other chests and, of course, the other rooms. Yeah, just like it said. So it's good in a way that you don't actually have to find a compass. All you need to do is just get the dungeon map. I personally prefer that, but anywho. Alright, there's a locked door. We have to go up in this area, and there's Zelda, apparently. And there's one chest left, so let's go get that chest. It should be the small key that will unlock the next area. Alright, so I forgot to also show this. Um, back here at the very entrance from the hallway that we just came in, if you get rid of those wall tillas and then you climb these vines, there's a little opening up here, and if you break these wooden blocks with your sword, it creates a little bit of a shortcut down into the first room of Skyview Temple. Alright, so now that we have uh, gotten the water level uh, risen, risen twice, we got the water level to rise twice. Oh, bad English right there. <laughs> it's been a long day. Anyway, um, we can climb these vines by crossing over that log, and this brings us up to the top floor here, and will bring us up to the room up here in this upper left, uh, in this upper right-hand corner. And we are going to go after that chest that was marked on the map. Uh, this room is clearly the room that we were in before, where it had the tablet talking about the stones. Um, here we have another Skulltula, uh, probably one of the last ones we're going to have to fight the traditional style. So right now I'm trying to get the trying to get the Skulltula to turn around. Okay, there we go. So now we can thrust forward. Oh, I got hit. Oh, come on. All right. See, it's kind of not very responsive when you're trying to do the thrust, especially with the Skulltulas, where it's kind of difficult. Anyway, just like the room that we had at the very beginning, uh, here's there should be a heart in this. Yep, I was right. Uh, just like in the first room where we had the eyeballs and we had to confuse them by rotating our sword, if we align ourselves with both eyes, we can rotate and eventually, there we go. They will disable and we will be able to get to the chest. And inside should be a small key, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, can't be anything else, yeah. You got the small key! Woo! Alright, so now that we have the small key, uh, we can take a little bit of a shortcut just by heading down in the water. Um, and let's head back to the main room. Oh, I forgot about the webs. Alright, so now that we have the small key, uh, if we check our map, we should have activated all the chests in this area. And now we can move on to the new area that we haven't been before. Alright, so this kind of marks the midpoint of the dungeon, in a way. And... In a sense, the last room was our main room for the dungeon, but this room is big. Um, from here, you branch off to everything else in the dungeon. You don't have to go back at all, so uh, just get used to this little area. There's a bird statue around here. 
on the left. But for the time being, let's avoid that, and we see a switch clearly above us. Let's get rid of these keys. And let's activate that switch. Oh, stupid keys, get out of my way. It's kind of hard to target the keys with this slingshot, but uh, it's much it's much easier to just use a sword. Unless you're really good with a slingshot. Uh, it's a little bit interesting when you Z-target. But anyway, we now unlock that door, so let's head on through. If you're not really ready to head on through, I would actually first suggest saving, because now we are about to encounter the mini-boss. The mid-boss of the dungeon. Alright, this guy is the Stealth Oss. And the Stealth Oss are main, main, a staple character, main blah blah, I can't even figure out what I'm trying to say. They are main uh, enemy in almost every Zelda game. Uh, in order to defeat these enemies, you want to use your sword to hit them in the direction that their swords are aligned. So hit them from the corner, up down, corner. And if they do start to attack, you can either block their attacks or you can dodge out of the way. Um, I'm going to try to get a d uh, dodge in, in this battle at least once to show you guys what's going to happen. Dodge is probably the best thing to do. Uh, see, I was trying to go for the dodge there, but I didn't. Anyway, let's go for a dodge, dodge, dodge. Alright, once you get the dodge, their arms will fall off, and then you can put in a couple blows. And that's the end of the stop us. And I landed right on top of the chest. Nice. Uh, stealth house, they're actually not a bad enemy. They're really, really enjoyable. A lot more strategy than the red Baco blends or the green Baco blends. But anyway, now that we've been the mini boss inside this treasure chest, we acquire the beetle. All right, so the beetle is probably one of the most useful items in this entire game. A uh, good thing about Zelda, uh, this game at least. Uh, all the items, they will be used throughout the rest of the game, so no spinners, no Twilight Princess spinners, or ball and chains. <laughs> and if you know what I mean, you, you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, now we got the beetle. The beetle can do quite a few things. It can cut ropes, it can cut uh, spider webs, um, you can scout out areas in the dungeon if you're kind of confused on where to go, you can activate switches by crashing into them, you can collect rupees, you can collect treasures, uh, you can't collect pieces of heart, but that's beside the point. You can do a whole lot of other stuff. And you control it by tilting the Wii Remote. The beetle is a very, very, very good item, and I'll try to upgrade it sometime later in the game, but anyway. Alright, so now that we got the beetle, instead of having to face these, uh, uh, there's a green Baka one. Interrupting my thought process. All right, let's wait for him to attack me. All right, there we go. But like I was saying, instead of having to wait for the skull tail to come down, we can now activate the beetle and cut the spider web that the spider's hanging off of. And I didn't aim high enough. All right, so let's go for the string. There we go. And now that we've dropped the spider, it's on his backside, and we can go in for the Fatal Blow. Yes, a very simple way to kill these Skulltulas. And so let's get this one. Alright. Oh, I deactivated it too soon. Um, of course, the beetle will not be able to fly forever. Uh, you'll find out when it's about to end its fly cycle, or its flight cycle, when it starts shining, or glowing red and beeping. But anyway, that's, that's only if you make it fly for a very long time. Actually, the beetle has some pretty, has a pretty good substantial flight duration as it is. You could always upgrade to have a longer flight, but that's, that's for later on. Anyway, let's try to get it up there, and of course I knew I was going to miss that. Uh, we're going to be spending quite a bit of time in this large dome area. Um, like I said, it is the main area for the rest of the dungeon, so there are a few things that we need to take care of. And there are a few rupees that we can collect, a few other treasures that we can acquire. 
Um, we can grab rupees, just like we did with that 21. We can also grab the green rupee. Alright. I mean, there's not much I can say. I mean, it's really self-explanatory. Uh, of course, there are tons of little passageways that we can find in the walls. And some of them lead to rupees, and others lead to uh, other things that we need to do in order to get further on in the dungeon. Alright, so... You can also see some crates up there. We can knock those crates down. I'm going to do that later. I'm just right now trying to take care of these little passageways. So we can grab this green rupee here. And... I'm going to get a little bit closer in order to get into that compartment over there. And there's a green buckle blend I knew I forgot over here. And here's some more keys. Of course, got to have the really annoying keys. <laughs> All right, good. So, um, I'm gonna save and then I'll take care of the rest of the stuff. Yeah, that's a plan.